Shalom, and welcome to Line of the Hill Ministries. In today's teaching, we will be talking about renewal of the mind. If you want to follow along, I will be posting this in the comment box below. And now, under the teaching. But Elohim has revealed them to us through His Spirit. For the Spirit searches all matters, even the depths of Elohim. For whom among men knows the thoughts of a man except the spirit of a man that is in him? So also the thoughts of Elohim. No one has known except the spirit of Elohim. And we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit that is from Elohim, in order to know what Elohim has favorably given us, which is which we also speak not in words which a man's wisdom teaches, but which the set-apart spirit teaches, comparing the spiritual matters with the spiritual matters. But the natural man does not receive the matters of the spirit of Elohim, for they are foolishness to him, and he is unable to know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he who is spiritual discerns indeed all matters, but he himself is discerned by no one. For who has known the mind of Yahweh? Who shall instruct him? But we have the mind of Messiah. First Corinthians 2, verses 10 through 16. What needs to be renewed if we have the mind of Messiah? What is wrong with our minds? One major issue is that the relationship between our minds and hearts has become perverted with the roles being reversed. The proper function in relation to the mind is to make decisions, whereas the heart's proper function is to sense and feel things as a servant of the spirit-renewed mind. Even though we have the Messiah's mind, many of us do not walk in it. Let's start with the heart's function. The heart is represented as merry, glad, stubborn, exultant, hateful, spiteful, loving, and so on through scripture. In other words, the heart feels and understands things in a way that our other faculties cannot. It, it wonders how an answer can achieve a level of comprehension that goes beyond the mere comprehension of facts, as the Proverbs say, so that you make your ear attend to wisdom, incline your heart to understanding. Proverbs 2, verse 2. The Hebrew root word used here for incline is nata, Strong's H, 5186, meaning to stretch out, spread out, extend, incline. What is interesting to note is that the Hebrew word for tribes comes from, the, from this root, which is mata, Strong's number H4294, meaning a staff, rod, branch, a tribe, a branch of a vine and is used to refer to Israel's tribe as well as Moshe's rod. Yahweh's word is for all tribes, branches of Israel. And when we see the meaning of these words, we are quickly reminded of our master's words about the vine. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who stays in me and I in him, he bears much fruit. Because without me, you are able to do nothing. John 15, verse 5. To open our hearts to understanding is to ensure that we are true branches. And being attached to the vine gives us the proper mindset to have because when we submit to his words and ways, he gives us his thoughts on a matter. The heart of the righteous ponders how to answer, but the mouth of the wrong pours out evil. Proverbs 15, verse 28. 
the Hebrew word translated as ponders comes from the root word haga, Strong's H, 1897, which means to moan, to growl, utter, speak, muse, declare, and meditate. In the context of this proverb, it expresses the meaning of meditating and thinking about how to respond. People frequently speak without thinking, and later regret the words they speak in haste, but without forethought, which is why we must not let our hearts hurry with our words. Do not be hasty with your words, or wow. And let your heart hurry, and let not your heart hurry to bring forth a word before Elohim, for Elohim is in the heavens, and you are on earth. Therefore, let your words be few, Ecclesiastes 5, verse 2. Which is why Yaakov tells us, Be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. James 1, verse 19. And because the heart is at the seat of our fallen emotion, we are warned not to follow it. And it shall be to you for a tzitzit, and you shall see it, and shall remember all the commands of Yahweh, and shall do them, and not search after your own heart and your own eyes, which you went whoring. Numbers 15, verse 39. Because the heart is prone to whoring or adultery, we wear seats at the corner of our garments to remind us to keep Yahweh's commands. Make tassels on the four corners of the garment with which you cover yourself. Deuteronomy 22, verse 12. So that you remember, I shall do all my commandments, and be set apart unto your Elohim. Numbers 15, verse 40. And if we do follow or trust our own hearts, we become fools, according to Proverbs. He who trusts in his own heart is a fool. But he who walks wisely is delivered. Proverbs 28, verse 26. The heart should never be trusted, and the heart should not make decisions in our lives. Why? Because emotions can shift as quickly as the wind. Indeed, the prophet Jeremiah, or Jeremiah as he's commonly known, tells us, The heart is crooked above all, it's desperately wicked. Who shall know it? Jeremiah 17, verse 9. The heart, then, is more deceitful than any other part of us, more likely to mislead, misrepresent itself, and lie. When left to its own devices, the heart is the most selfish and, as a result, the most dishonest instrument we have. Now that we know about the heart, what about the mind? The mind's function is to objectively know and then decide what to do with what is known. The mind's function is to set the course for all other faculties to follow. It is not the function of the heart. However, in order for it to function properly, we must balance it. Now how do we go about doing that? We focus our mind on the spirit. But those who live according to this flesh set their mind on the matters of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit, the matters of the Spirit. Romans 8, verse 5. Yahweh works through us in such a way that the Spirit rules the mind, that the mind directs the heart. Psalms puts it this way. I bless Yahweh who has given me counsel. My mind also instructs me in the nights. Psalm 16, verse 7. The Hebrew word for mind is kilya, Strong's number H3629, a kidney as an essential organ. Figuratively, the mind as the interior self. As a result, the mind is an important part of the decision-making process. It teaches the rest of me to follow, uh, teaches the rest of me to process information and determine the objective truth of Yahweh's word. 
When we let our hearts rule, however, objective truth becomes skewed and twisted. And we must remember that a heart may plan man's steps, but Yahweh directs them. A man's heart plans his way, but Yahweh establishes his step. Proverbs 16, verse 9. In other words, Yahweh is the one who tells the mind where to go, and the heart is to follow. We are in big trouble when we base our lives on our feelings rather than the objective, righteous truth of Yahweh's word. Allowing our renewed minds to study Yahweh's word, absorb it, and bind it to our being, we are set on a course of obedience, tolerating no devi deviation from it. However, the heart that is disciplined by a renewed mind is free to become a tool for gentleness and discerning the needs of others in order to serve with compassion. This requires maturation on our relationship with Messiah. And maturity begins when we set our minds to do what is right and then allow our hearts to follow. For example, I could choose not to lash out at my wife in an argument because my mind, steeped in, righteous, right, in the righteous truth of Yahweh's word, recalls James 1.19. As a result, it instructs my heart to feel with my wife before acting out in anger to prioritize her needs over mine. We mistake emotions for strength in our broken identity or thinking. They are not. We believe that anger serves as a form of defense. It's not. We believe that feelings are truthful. They deceive. The task of the mind is to provide a framework of objective tracks for the heart to operate within. Proverbs prov provides an example of this when it states, A man who has no control over his spirit is like a broken down city without a wall. Proverbs 29, I mean 25, verse 28. The Hebrew word translated here as control is a matsar. Strong's number 4623, which means restrain, self-control, and comes from the primitive root verb asar, Strong's H6113, which means to restrain, hold back, prevent, prevail. A man who cannot control his desires is like an undefended city that is vulnerable to attack. A broken city without walls represents an attacking army that has made a breach or opening in the city's defense, compromising the city's protection and making an all inhabitants vulnerable for prey for the raiding enemy. So too, a man who cannot restrain himself from the things of the flesh has no defense and is completely open to the attack of the enemy. This is why Paulus tells us, Though we walk in the flesh, we do not fight according to the flesh. For the weapons we fight are not fleshly, but mighty and Elohim for overthrowing strongholds, overthrowing reasonings, and every high matter that exalts itself against the knowledge of Elohim, taking captive every thought to make it obedient to the Messiah, and being ready to punish all disobedience when your, dis when your obedience is complete. Second Corinthians 10 verses 3 through 6. As Messiah's followers, it is our responsibility to take our thoughts captive so that our hearts can follow. The war is a spiritual war, and spiritual weapons are required for this spiritual war. And Yahweh has given us these spiritual weapons that Paulus tells us in Ephesians for the rest, my brothers, be strong in the Master and in the mightiness of his strength. Put on the complete armor of Elohim, for you have power to stand against the schemes of the devil. 
because we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against authorities, against the world rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual matters of wickedness in the heavenlies. Because of this, take up the complete armor of Elohim, so that you have power to withstand in the wicked day, and having done all to stand, stand then, having girded your waist with truth, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having fitted your feet with the preparation of the good news of peace, above all, having taken up the shield of belief, with which you shall have power to quench all the burning arrows of the wicked one, taken also the helmet of salvation, deliverance, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of Elohim, Ephesians 6, verses 10 to 17. So you can take a stand against the enemy. Paul speaks of the helmet of salvation, the sword of the Spirit, which is Yahweh's word, and the shield of faith, which we quench the fiery darts of the wicked one, and then having fully armed you, he continues by saying, praying at all times with all prayer and supplication of the Spirit, watching in all perseverance and supplication for all the set-apart ones. Ephesians 6, verse 18. Today, because we accept Yahweh's death and resurrection as an atonement for our sin, we fight our spiritual battles primarily in our minds and in the heavenly realms. Yavashu has also included us by accompanying us on our journey and incorporating that work into every aspect of our minds. While the enemy attacks us with negativity and lies, Yahweh works his truth into our minds through his word. It takes the strength of the spirit to stand and to do what is right when everything we have learned in the world prompts us to react in the flesh. Perhaps in this regard, we're not much different than a car engine. No matter how expensive the vehicle is, how high the octane we purchase, or how finely tuned the engine is, if we don't remember to fill up the gas tank sooner or later, we're going to go no further. And no matter how well developed we are in Messiah, or how brilliant our minds are in the scriptures of theology, or how good our emotional life usually is, without continuous staying in Messiah, our flesh will resurrect and manifest its corruption not long after we forget to let Yahweh love us enough. And that is, putting, that is what putting on Yahweh's armor is all about putting on his love, putting on the mind of Messiah. The question is, do we have the mind of Messiah? Does it have us? A better question to ask is this. We know we have the spirit of Yahweh, but does Yahweh, does he have us? Does he rule our minds and hearts? And so we should pray. Abba, we say we surrender our minds and hearts to you. We say we don't want to be filled with empty striving. Please fill us with your spirit and renew our minds and hearts. Help us daily to put on the armor of love that you have for us. In Yahweh's name, Amen, but hallelujah. Please understand that when we believe and appreciate Yahweh's presence, he welcomes and delights in the invitation to imbue all of our heart, mind, and soul with his love. And we know in every fiber of our being that Yahweh's Spirit flows through every thoughtful act, every gentle and compassionate word, every kindness, every forgiveness, relieving us of our burden and bringing us to rest. This is the reality of accepting his yoke. It is his love, compassion, word, and teaching that renews our mind. As Yahushua says, Come to me, all you are labor, all you labor and are burdened, 
and I shall give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble in heart, and you shall find rest for your beings. For my yoke is gentle, and my burden is light. Matthew 11, verses 28 through 30. This is what it means to walk as Elohim's children in his spirit, to know and celebrate that our set apart and awesome creator is also ever present, intimate, and delighting in us as we go about our lives in him, preparing for eternity. And as we die to the self on a daily basis, his spirit transforms all the pathways of our thinking and feeling as long as we let him love us and love him as he commanded. Hear, O Israel, Yahweh your Elohim, Yahweh is one. And you shall love Yahweh your Elohim with all your heart, and with all your being, and with all your mind. That these words which I am commanding you today shall be in your heart, and you shall impress them upon your children. And you shall speak of them when you sit in your house, and when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise up. And you shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontless between your eyes. And you shall write them on the doorpost of your house and on your gates. Deuteronomy 6, verses 4 through 9. Hallelujah. If you like this teaching, please comment, like, and share, and subscribe to the channel. And click on the notification button to be notified of the next teaching. God be blessed. And shalom to your homes.